Today, Mother Church celebrates the feast of St. Francis of Assisi. And I wish you all the blessing and the peace of the great saint uh, of 13th century, but as fresh as ever. May his peace and blessing be upon each of you, upon this family rosary center here, all the staff members and all those who come every day here. We thank God <clears throat> for having given us and given to the church a saint like him who continues to inspire the world, inspire, inspire many, countless number of people, including our Holy Father Pope Francis, whom we met just recently at, at Limina, and who, as you all know, came out with the, one of the most valuable documents on environment, uh, Laudato Si. And during our Ad Limina in Rome this time, a good number of uh, bishops had a chance to make a trip to Assisi. For me, it was the second time. <clears throat> I kept thinking, as we go, through the village, is it a village or the town even? Eh? It's more of a village and town, small, nothing extraordinary. Who or what is this man? Who after eight centuries continue to have such influence, power exerting on so many thousand millions of people and attracting and drawing people in millions, pilgrims, streams of pilgrims go every day and I was very curious to see the, his father's house this time, although he missed a little bit, where he made radical decision to uh, follow the Lord in the most, uh, <clears throat> in the closest way in his poverty, humility, and obedience. And uh, we realized that not only him, but many, many other great saints in the church and many other great people who made great uh, impact and contribution to humanity and to society, to the world, are people with great and profound faith. Down the ages, they make great contribution because of their faith and their commitment and singleness, singleness of ho uh, purpose and heart. And they are people who know God not merely intellectually or conceptually, but who know God and Christ personally, experientially. I think that's all what matters very much. We may know in theory too much of things, but very little of personal experience of God. And people knowing God personally, experientially, cannot but love Him passionately. And loving passionately, they cannot but serve Him with all their strength and with all their might. I think all the saints, if you look at their lives, that's what they are. First of all, you have to know God. As St. Thomas Aquinas says, you cannot possibly love a person that you don't know. But of course, it's a lifelong story to know even. But the little that we know with a little intellect, we must, knowing God who is merciful and compassionate love, we cannot but fall in love with that God. And falling in love, we want to serve Him. The question is, what is our experience of God? Is it only here at the mind level? Or does it go deep down so that it has become my personal experience? In the Gospel today, <clears throat> we see the Lord rebuking the town of Chorazin and Bethsaida in His earnestness. If the Lord wants something that He rebuked the disciples quite often, it's because of their lack of faith. If only you have a, the faith as little as the master's seed, you can tell the mountain, shift and it'll shift. And he also said, will the Son of Man find faith when he comes? That is the question. Will he come f find faith today if he comes? And also rebuke the city of Capernaum saying, I've been doing miracles after miracles here in your towns and cities, but no effect. If only these were done in pagan, more pagan places like Tyre and Sidon, they'll be repenting in ashes and sudden sackcloth. So he was very sad uh, for, no, for not finding fate. <clears throat> um,
One of the uh, most beautiful, there are many great examples of faith in the gospel, but one that always strikes me is that woman with the hemorrhage for 18 years. If I only touch the cloak, the little hem of the Lord, that will be enough. I'll be healed. With that faith, she went. And the day before yesterday, I think with Callie and someone made that comment again. Um, and the Lord knew the woman who touched with faith. Who touched me, he said. And the disciples said, Lord, Master, all of us, so many people, thousands of people are surrounding you, touch you. No, no, no. There's one who touched me with the faith. The faith of that woman, deep enough to move the power waiting from the Lord. Can we have that faith? Is our faith that deep? If our faith is deep, I think we will also touch the power of the Lord to transform us somehow in some way. I think, I think we can go on. I don't know how many minutes more we have. Uh, I think Father pa Patrick Payton was one of those who have such faith in the Lord, having experience, and also a blessed mother. If we are here today, it's because of his faith that, you know, bears fruit and flowering now and blooming. And if I'm here myself today, it's because of the faith of my parents. My father was a catechist, French-Canadian, working with them. And he had such faith in Mary and Rosary. He used to sing the litany. I'm nowhere compared to him. I say little, of, little rosaries, but my father used to. And today, if I'm here standing as the first, my community, Museau Holy Cross, to join in that little uh, part of the state, and a bishop over and above, it's because of the faith of my parents, especially my daddy, and uh, whose funeral my mother and my father, I, I could not be there because I was away. I was in Canada and I was in Bangalore. And thank you for your prayer day before yesterday for my little brother, and again, I'm away. I thought this is the f price you have to pay for being the disciples of the Lord, being religious and being trying to be faithful to your commitment. So I thank you for your prayers, and please pray for our little state and the ISIS of Isol, because over there, you know, it's just not barely 70 years, uh, years fate, not even 100. Think of the 2,000 years of fate in down south when Father Jill, uh, Jilson and Father Pinto are there. We're nowhere. And there we also find the need to inculcate the Catholic faith there, because we're not free from being influenced by the consumeristic and materialistic, the uh, <coughs> individualistic tendency of the bigger world. And so many distractions, in spite of our science and technological advancement, I think there we find more distractions and uh, more difficult to remain focused. As for the really, I like focus. You know, the focus is what we need. And I request your prayers for us, that our young people that uh, <clears throat> the faith be brought by a Catholic faith be brought at the deeper level so that we can bring our families together. At the Dyson level, the women are quite active, but we also try to have family rosary, I mean, a family altar, where the Word of God and the rosary to be said. We try to uh, 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 strengthen that. So we also pray for you here for the family rosary and uh, different parts of the world. And in this, I think we'll unite, and the faith, the unity, the love in the family will grow as a vision of Father Peyton. May God bless you.